This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 3 minutes, 44 seconds into tonight's mission. You've just seen the successful liftoff of the Atlas V carrying the NRO L-35 payload for the National Reconnaissance Office. As I mentioned earlier, tonight's mission is the first flight of the Aerojet Rocketdyne RL-10C engine on the Centaur second stage, and I'm now joined by Chuck Schmitzer from Aerojet Rocketdyne. Chuck, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Matt. I was really excited about being here, and it's an honor to support this important mission. So we're, we're talking about the RL-10, which has been a workhorse in America's space program for decades. Can you tell us a little bit more about the RL-10 and the evolution to the RL-10C? Well, the key to the RL-10 is its ability to harness the power of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. That's what allows us to generate the performance needed. It also has the capability for multiple relights in space, which provides flexibility and precision in placing these payloads into the needed orbit. And it has done that over and over again for the last 50 years. In fact, tonight's mission marks the 455th RL-10 engine to fly in space. Chuck, that's an amazing history for the RL-10. And obviously, there's a lot that goes into being able to produce an engine with that kind of capability and then the evolution to the RL-10C. Um, have you, what else can you tell us about the RL-10 and what's gotten us here today? Well, the history of the RL-10 goes back 50 years. It spans uh, five decades. My involvement personally with the RL-10 program started with a Titan Centaur mission, TC-19. I got to support that up at the Cape, and after that I was hooked on the rocket business. So, uh, Matt, I brought along a video that has uh, some of the history of the RL-10 and also history of the RL-10C. So great. Thanks, Chuck. Let's go ahead and take a look at that video. The Aerojet Rocketdyne RL-10 is the highest performing cryogenic upper stage engine in the world. It is designed, developed, built, and tested by a group of highly skilled men and women working in West Palm Beach, Florida. Over the past five decades, the RL-10 engine family has helped place numerous weather and communication satellites into orbit and has helped deliver scientific payloads to nearly every planet in the solar system. The RL-10 family of engines has powered a variety of different launch vehicles, such as the Saturn, Titan, Atlas, and Delta. As well as the Voyager space probe, which has now reached interstellar space. Today's launch of the Atlas V carrying the NROL-35 payload to orbit for the National Reconnaissance Office will mark the first flight of a brand new model of RL-10 engine, known as the RL-10C-1. Well, we've been preparing for this first mission for about four years now. Um, the RL-10C-1 is a new RL-10 engine model. It's the latest engine model of the RL-10, and we've been designing, developing, and qualifying it. It's been about a four-year program. The RL-10C1 is the first step to develop a common core engine with a C1 flying on Atlas and uh, using the same core engine to have a C2 version that will fly on Delta. Uh, one of the advantages is simple, we don't have two production lines anymore, we'll simply have one and then we'll kit the engines to either fly on Atlas or Delta and that drives a lot of cost out of the process. This new engine combines the best attributes of the RL-10A-4-2 engine model developed for use with the Centaur upper stage of the Atlas V launch vehicle, and the RL-10B-2, which is currently used on the second stage of the Delta IV launch vehicle. The RL-10C1 is really a combination of the best attributes of the RL-10A42, the engine that was currently uh, flying on Atlas, and the RL-10B2, which is the engine that currently flies on Delta upper stages, and flew and powered the EFT-1, the first Orion test flight last week. So what we've done is we've combined all the best attributes of both of those engine models and combined those into one new core engine model that can then be used as a core engine to fly on either Atlas or Delta. The RL-10C-1 flying aboard today's mission incorporates new and upgraded technologies that improve the durability and performance of the engine while providing additional thrust for the Centaur upper stage. The new technology on the RL-10C1 engine includes an improved dual direct spark ignition system that lights on the first spark in all of our test programs. It's just an excellent new ignition system and also improved turbo machinery. So we have improved uh, critical speed margins and we also have improved pumping performance on our turbo pumps. The RL-10 is an incredible engine. It, um, it is extremely lightweight. It has the highest performance of any upper stage engine in operation in the world. 
and uh, it is reignitable in space, which is a big deal for uh, mission flexibility. Aerojet Rocketdyne is proud to support our partners at United Launch Alliance as we work to deliver affordable launch services that enable agencies like the National Reconnaissance Office to fulfill their mission to keep our nation safe. So Chuck, th thanks for bringing that to share with us and to share that with our viewers. Can you share a little bit more from your perspective about what the RL-10C means to Aerojet Rocketdyne, to ULA, and to our customers? Yeah, Matt, I can. Uh, the RL-10C brings the best combination of our assets, our capability, and our performance and delivers that to our customer. It's our first step towards commonality, and it's part of our continuous drive towards affordability for our customer. So I got a little bit of trivia for you, Matt. Uh, we've got an RL-10 logo that we like to use. If you look in the background of that logo, we've had 11 stars. So after the first flight of the RL-10C this evening, we get to add our 12th star to that logo. That's really exciting, Chuck, just talking about that long legacy and continuing it now with the RL-10C in this first flight. So what's next for the RL-10? Well, Matt, we can't rest. Um, we've got derivatives of the C engine already under development. Uh, key to that is the incorporation of more modern manufacturing techniques. Uh, one technique that we're really excited about is the introduction of additive manufacturing for the RL-10 components. Uh, that's going to be key to ensure in the future for that program. Well, Chuck, I really appreciate you coming and sharing with us about the RL-10, uh, the legacy, and then evolving it into the future and supporting the critical missions that we have. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks, Matt. I appreciated you inviting me.